coordinators of a number of major area projects and has an economic community and has a social cultural community over the last six years, including ASEAN Rising, ASEAN and ACBN 2015, Framing ASEAN Social Cultural Community Post 2015, the midterm review of the implementation of the AEC Blueprint and the AEC Scorecard Monitoring Project. Uh, he also led two important area projects on agricultural, trade, and development in ASEAN. At present, he is the lead coordinator of the Joint Area Philippine Government um, Five Volume Publication Project, ASEAN at 50 Retrospectives and Perspectives on the Making, Substance, Significance, and Future of ASEAN in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the ASEAN in 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, and our session chair for this um, afternoon is no other than the senior economist of area, Dr. Ranchana Iqbal Jr. Thank you very much. Uh, what does ASEAN mean to us in people? We have four speakers. Can we be just 12 minutes, each presentation? So that we have more time to really discuss what does ASEAN mean to ASEAN people? Of course, we have one discussion uh, ahead of ASEAN Foundation. But what do they like to ask Lydia Brody for a 12-minute presentation? I'll give you about, after 10 minutes, I'll say they want to come on with this. Translated into the local language. 
After the surveys were completed, there were multiple focus group discussions with some of the respondents. In total, there were 2,322 2, respondents. The respondents represented different sectors, students, labor, business, government, officials, civil society, academia, and others. You can see that the largest group, the blue one, 29% students. Next slide. Um, age, the vast majority of the respondents were under the age of 50, 89% in total. Uh, only the Philippines, where the share is 37%, had more than 50% of the 50 plus age group. At the other extreme, 73% of the respondents in Lao PDR were 15 to 30 years old. Next slide. Um, equally split between men and women, and uh, for ASEAN as a whole, some of the individual countries had less equal splits. Okay, next slide. So the first section of, uh, sorry, I'm just going to the findings now. Next slide. I think this was already mentioned earlier, so I won't dwell on it for very long, but virtually all of the respondents were at least slightly familiar with ASEAN. Three-fifths of them are moderately and very familiar with ASEAN. Um, at the low end, 80% of the respondents in Brunei were familiar, and the high end, Philippines, 96%. The Philippines perhaps explained by the fact I already mentioned that the age group was higher and generally older people know more about ASEAN. Indonesia was also high at 90%, perhaps because the Secretariat is based in Jakarta. And Lampier PDR was high at 91%, perhaps because they were chair last year. Next slide. The awareness has increased substantially since 2014. They were able to compare our survey with two previous surveys done by ISEAS in Singapore in 2007 and 2014. And you can see that in 2014, 56% of their respondents were aware of ASEAN, whereas in 2016, in ours, 81% um, said that they were aware of ASEAN. Again, this may be explained by the fact that ASEAN economic communities happened in 2015, so there was a lot of press at that point. Next slide. In our focus group discussions, it turns out that a lot of people think that ASEAN and ASEAN economic community are the same thing. So this supports the previous finding. Very few of the respondents knew about the other two pillars of ASEAN. Next slide. Two thirds of respondents perceived their country's membership in ASEAN as moderately to very beneficial. And regional supply chains, greater diversity of goods for sale in their countries, ease of travel to other ASEAN countries and greater tourism opportunities, trade and investment linkages, greater access to jobs. Few understood the political security benefits, especially during regional stability, that ASEAN has brought. Next slide. Another question asked people to define how much they felt like an ASEAN citizen. This is looking at the top I'm two I'm categories, right. very much and moderately. You can see it's quite high across the board. Indonesia and Laos PDR are the highest with over 90% feeling they were very much a moderately citizen. Just under 80% Philippines actually represents the ASEAN average. Thailand by far the lowest with less than 50%. Only 3% of the respondents said they did not feel like they were ASEAN citizens. Next slide. However, in focus group discussions, it came out that a lot of people defined or understood their citizenship as a geographic or even ethnic closeness and not really a sense of uh, ASEAN identity or ASEAN belonging. Nonetheless, 
also do focus group discussions, we think that the um, findings suggest that the sense of ASEAN belonging, um, which is shaped primarily by geographic and ethnic closeness, and facilitated by ease of travel within the region, could blossom into a full sense of ASEAN citizenship. Next slide. The next series of questions went to what do ASEAN people see as the priorities for ASEAN and for their individual countries? They were asked to rank the five most pressing problems um, and as a whole until 2025. They were given a list of 21 issues to choose from and were given the option to add an issue of their choice. Next slide. Um, top five pressing problems at the ASEAN level. Number one, corruption. Number two, climate change and natural disasters. Number three, income disparity and social inequality. Number four, trade, investment, and regulatory coherence. Number five, agriculture and food security. We can note that the top two pressing concerns for ASEAN that require concerted action by ASEAN member states were non-economic issues. Of the top five concerns, only one was inherently related to economic integration. This implies that ASEAN people do not look at ASEAN primarily from an economic integration perspective, despite the fact that the respondents were more aware of the ASEAN economic community. Rather, they seem to see ASEAN from a community perspective sharing largely common concerns. So this suggests that a means of deepening the sense of ASEAN belonging, identity, and citizenship, and thus ASEAN community, is to address and prioritize common interests of ASEAN people. Next slide. Top five pressing problems at the national level. Corruption number one, again. Income disparity has moved up from number three to replace climate change for number two. Agriculture has moved from number five to three. Unemployment is a newcomer, not in the top five priorities at the ASEAN level. Then number five, we have added new ones, infrastructure education along with climate change. It's worth emphasizing significant overlap in the three of the national priorities, corruption, income disparity, and agriculture are also in the top five priorities at the ASEAN level. At the other end of the spectrum, it's interesting to note gender, uh, health services, non-tariff measures, customs, efficiency, access to high quality financial services were only mentioned by very few respondents. Next slide. Corruption. Okay, this is our number one issue according to the survey. No other problem or concern among the member states had this level of overlap. Most countries see this slightly more of, as a national problem. You can see the country level is in blue, the ASEAN level is in orange. Three exceptions. Singapore. Check out Singapore. Country level, almost no issue with corruption. But as an ASEAN level issue, it's, it looks like it's 10 times higher than their country concern. Um, Brunei and the Philippines also see it as a problem to be dealt with more at the regional level than at the country level. However, the fact that corruption is the most pressing problem overall suggests that respondents see corruption and related government problems as a critical bottleneck to production efficiency, investment attractiveness, competitiveness, and possibly even development. Next please. Next slide. 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 The final section of the survey, got it, two minutes. Final section of the survey looked at expectations and aspirations. We divided those 15 questions into four groups of questions. The first one was an integrated and connected ASEAN. That's what these four questions are. The second one was ASEAN global and regional engagement. 
Third one was Resilient Sustainable ASEAN. And fourth was People Engagement, Governments, and Social Equity. <coughs> Um, I'm just going to briefly state that the figures show high aspirations for an integrated and connected ASEAN, with all of the figures having about 80%, except for ease of finding work in other countries. And you will note, not surprisingly, the expectations are lower than aspirations, although in this particular group, the gap between expectations and aspirations was not as large as it is in other groups. So skipping ahead to the next more slides. Okay. Um, so the next group is global and regional engagement. Again, the aspirations were higher. Um, the questions were ASEAN is a strong voice and important player in global negotiations and forum. And the second one, ASEAN deeply engages powers in the region and the world. So the, the survey of results for both those questions quite similar, with support from more than three quarters of respondents for the aspiration for ASEAN to become a strong global regional presence. Indonesia and the Philippines really stood up overwhelming support for uh, a, a role for ASEAN at the global level. At the expectation side, they're a little bit more measured. Three-fifths of respondents expected ASEAN's deep engagement with the world and regional powers. In the focus group discussions, we found that there seemed to be three main motivations. A continued need to provide a platform for regional dialogue, an increased need to build strength in numbers to stand up to outside influences, and an increase a sense of pride and self-confidence in being able to stand shoulder to shoulder with the world's greatest powers. Resilient and sustainable ASEAN. I'm going to skip. I can see what's coming. So this means you have to go look at the book. People engagement, governance, and social equality. This one is where we picked up again on the corruption. And this is where we saw the, one of the largest uh, gaps between expectations and aspirations. People, of course, want to get rid of corruption, and they have low expectations for being able to get rid of it. Lastly, last slide. Are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of ASEAN? Good results here. Um, the share of respondents who are moderately optimistic and extremely optimistic about ASEAN's future range from 35% in Thailand to 82% in the Philippines. Only 4 to 5% of Singapore and Thailand's respondents were extremely optimistic, as well as much as 34% of Indonesian response that respondents felt that way. Okay. Ending on positive news. Thank you very much, uh, I'm going to invite Ms. Uh, Jara uh, to uh, sit up uh, for the Philippine uh, country. That is, those who are more than 50 
years old reported high awareness of ASEAN, while younger respondents, regardless of sex, reported moderate familiarity. Now, uh, during the focus group discussions, next slide. During the focus group discussions, we also asked the F3 participants about their uh, sorts of information on ASEAN. And, okay, and most of them mentioned school. While those who are um, already uh, working, like those in the business sector and uh, in the mixed group of uh, participants, who are mostly professionals, added uh, their work and, and profession. But only a few of them, only a few of them uh, mentioned the media. Actually, that no, the previous slide. Okay. Actually, that no media coverage of ASEAN is actually validated in the survey, wherein the results show that survey respondents think that media is not covering the ASEAN sufficiently. Next slide. So we also determine the, uh, their identification as ASEAN citizens. As you can see in the slide, majority felt very much that they are ASEAN citizens. Um, and this can be um, attributed to the fact that we had four participants. And as uh, I reported earlier, we saw that awareness of ASEAN increased with age. Those who are older, res uh, older respondents reported being more aware of ASEAN. Okay, next slide. Um, we also asked the respondents about um, their views on, the, on the, the benefits that our membership in uh, is about our uh, benefits from ASEAN membership. And majority expresses that Philippines is only benefiting moderately from our membership in ASEAN. The largest percentage of those that responded positively came from academia and the lowest was from the business sector. And the stupid response of the business sector is uh, worth investigating because these mean that they feel, and we're referring to the business sector, the business sector feels that they are not benefiting much from the association. Next slide. Okay. So the results of the screen show the um, the benefits of ASEAN membership as perceived by the new business and mixed group of participants. And look at looking at their specific results. Uh, reasons I mean it's fact that the association is viewed positively in terms of its economic importance, particularly in relation to trade, work opportunities, and technology transfer. However, there is also some recognition that ASEAN is important for maintaining peace in the region. Next slide. Okay, so we also asked the, uh, the question whether the Philippines should keep its uh, ASEAN membership. And more respondents, regardless of affiliation, said that they would be extremely concerned if the Philippines were to leave ASEAN. Um, and you can see on the screen some of the reasons given by the uh, youth in the FGD, which were quite insightful. And uh, they think that the, the, our membership in ASEAN is good in terms of uh, trade, and uh, in terms of uh, generating jobs, because the Philippines is for capacity to create jobs, and that living ASEAN will make it the Philippines as it will be a way solving problems, particularly conflicts and calamities. Next slide. Now, um, to remain relevant, it is also, also important for ASEAN to be responsive to the needs of individual countries. Okay, and so we asked our the respondents um, about their perception of the pressing problems confronting the Philippines now and into 2020. And you can see the results on the screen. Okay, so I aggregated them using a word cloud. So the bigger the word, the higher or the um, the more number of respondents uh, identified um, that particular issue. And um, flash on the screen are the top five. And these are affordable internet connection, poverty, um, corruption, agriculture, and food security, and energy provision and fines. So I circle them for ease of relevance. Okay. So these issues validate the most immediate concerns being faced by the country today. In fact, the cost and quality of internet service in the Philippines is one of the worst in the Asia Pacific region. And if this persists, it has serious implications on our growing um, IT, BPO industry and our services sector as a whole. So if you will look at the, uh, the um, right side of, of this line, though, those are the results from our FGD, which I advocated this in a bit. And as you can see, uh, most of the pressing issues selected by the survey respondents in the Philippines also figured in the, in the FGDs. Corruption and, uh, in fact, corruption and poverty also emerged in all three FGDs. Next slide. So we also asked the respondents to select the problems that they think are pressing problems for um, ASEAN. And um, you can see the top five there. First is climate change and natural disasters. 
offers. Second is territorial disputes. Third is uh, trade investment and regulatory clearance. Fourth, agriculture, food security, and inequality and food disruption. The climate change, trade issues, and territorial disputes figured in the, in the top five reflect the transnational scope and seriousness of these issues that require a more concerted regional effort. In terms of territorial and maritime disputes, um, actually, uh, during the actual most of the participants uh, immediately um, um, identify that as, as an issue. They immediately um, correlated uh, the issue on territorial and disputes Virtual disputes is South China Sea problem. On trade investment and re regulatory procurements, uh, remember that the business sector had the lowest appreciation of the benefits of ASEAN, and that could be related to the problems that the business sector is experiencing in this aspect. For instance, a recent paper written by Dr. Erlina Medalia and Melody Mantrin for um, Area noted that the negative effects of land tariff barriers on the Philippines' trade activities with other ASEAN countries. Okay. Um, on the right side, we can see there the FGD results, and uh, you can find that the, um, the, the FGD participants almost give the same set of answers. They, they also uh, mentioned climate change, the withdrawal of disputes, inequality, trade issues, and again, poverty and corruption. Now, next slide. So, um, the survey also investigated the respondents' expectations, aspirations, and hopes for ASEAN. So, what we did was to ask uh, was to ask them to state their agreement or disagreement with 15 statements depicting particular situations in Africa. Okay. So in all 15 statements except one, um, the majority of the respondents agree that the situations are um, described or likely to happen by 2025. <coughs> the only exception is on the statement, ASEAN major cities are less polluted now, are less polluted and more livable than they are today for which there was an equal number of respondents who were neutral and agreeable to it. This reflects pessimism about the quality of life in ASEAN cities which faces problems of congestion, lack of infrastructure, and rapid urbanization. Okay. It is also interesting to note that for the statement about good governance and low corruption, a number of respondents were neutral to it. Um, while the majority agree that the scenario could likely happen by 2025, a good number of respondents chose not to take sides, indicating that they were uncertain whether the scenario could be achievable in the future. This shows that in the minds of the respondents, corruption is very hard to eradicate. In fact, a youth participant in the FGD said that corruption is important in the culture of ASEAN countries. Next slide. So using the same set of statements, we also asked uh, the respondents what their aspirations and hopes are for ASEAN by 2025. And in all 15 statements, the majority agree, answered agree or strongly agree with more respondents choosing the latter. Now, um, skip, skip, skip. Now let us go, let us skip, skip those slides and go to the recommendations. Okay? Um, and most of my recommendations pertain to ways on how we could possibly address <coughs> the uh, low, uh, moderate awareness of ASEAN moderate identification as ASEAN citizens and the um, low appreciation of, uh, the, of the benefits from our ASEAN membership. And, okay, and my first recommendation is having more dynamic and targeted communication and outreach activities. Written there are some of the examples, some strategies on how we can um, do this, like increasing media coverage, partnering with professional media organizations, maximizing the use of social media, tapping student organizations, uh, continuing the activities for the youth, like scholarships, exchange programs, and leadership programs, celebrating the ASEAN Day in public schools every year, like the UN Day, considering, considering making it mandatory to have the ASEAN flag in schools and government offices, and encouraging the same of ASEAN anthem, who, who among us are aware of the ASEAN anthem? There is an ASEAN anthem. Okay? Um, second is maximizing schools as avenues for instilling awareness and appreciation from ASEAN among the youth. And this is important because they are our future leaders. If from small or young people know ASEAN and they understand and appreciate its importance, no doubt it will have a strong, active, and dynamic ASEAN community in the future. The situation in the Philippines is actually uh, lamentable. Um, I'm, I'm referring to the awareness of our young people of ASEAN. In fact, uh, the 2007 and 2014 studies conducted by ASEAS 
shows that the lowest knowledge about ASEAN was found among students in the Philippines, followed by those of Singapore. Okay, next slide. So how can we tap, can we tap our schools? What is by using school textbooks to educate our young people? Okay, in fact, those who uh, part, uh, our survey was more than simply this is a good idea. Okay, um, next slide. Another is by uh, encouraging the use of the ASEAN curriculum source book. And uh, this, actually, this recommendation is actually something that I call from the ICS book. And 